Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today I'm gonna to be telling you all about the GoPro Hero 10 Black. This is GoPro's newest flagship camera, and it's pretty interesting. But the question is, is this different from the previous GoPro, or is it kind of the same? So what did we discover about the Hero 10? Well, I'll tell you about video quality first, and then we'll go into usability. Now, the most noticeable thing that's different about the Hero 10 is the color. If you get any of the last four generations of GoPro and you just start shooting with them, they look pretty good right out of the box. They have these bright, vibrant colors, everything pops, but videographers and professionals don't really like that. We like to shoot a little bit flatter, a little bit more washed out, so that when we put it into the computer, we can then choose how the colors are going to look. And so I think every GoPro back to the four gives you the option to change from flat to GoPro color. Now it's interesting, the Hero 10 Black has a new color profile that it comes with out of the box, it's called Natural. It's not too contrasty, it's not too colorful, and it's not washed out and flat. It looks like real life. So if you know what you're doing, you can take an older GoPro and make it kind of look like this with a little bit of work. But now you don't really have to. It has this natural setting default right out of the box and it looks really, really good. Now another thing we noticed is there is a little bit less noise in low light situations. If it's getting late in the day, if it's a little darker out, it's just a less noisy image. It just looks better in low light. And if you're a professional or you shoot in lots of challenging lighting environments, that's kind of worth it. Then there's stabilization. GoPro claims that this has the best stabilization of any GoPro they've ever made, and it probably does. But to be honest, on a bicycle, I can't tell that much of a difference. If you strap, let's say, a Hero 7 to the chin bar of a full face helmet, it looks incredible. And so does this. If you take any GoPro and you put it on your chest and you're going down a really bumpy trail, you see all sorts of weird artifacts in the stabilization and it doesn't look perfect. The same is true for the Hero 10. It doesn't look perfect on a chest mount. Later on in the day, when it starts to get a little bit darker out, it's not gonna have as easy of a time stabilizing the image. It's still just an incremental improvement over the last one. Now with all that said, strapped to the chin bar of a helmet, it looks absolutely incredible. But in the right lighting conditions, so did the last three generations of GoPro. They're all incredible cameras. Now the big news that everybody's talking about on the Hero 10 is 5.3K resolution with 60 frames per second and full stabilization. So this thing is doing resolutions and frame rates that really, really high-end DSLRs can't do. But are you gonna notice it when you upload it to Facebook and it plays in a little square compressed? Probably not. Now what it does give you is a little bit of flexibility. If you're the kind of user that edits your videos, takes them into Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, you're gonna be able to punch in, crop, do additional software stabilization, and you're gonna have tons of pixels to work with. So while a typical consumer isn't gonna really notice a big difference in image quality in 5.3K, what they are gonna be able to do is take stills from their video. So if you have some frame that just looks amazing, you're watching the video, you pause it, oh my God, that's incredible, the dolphin was like, pooping as a, I don't know. You can just take that frame and get a picture out of it and you can post that picture and it's gonna be super high resolution. It's gonna be bigger than the image on a 4K TV. So to me, the really exciting thing about 5.3K is grabbing thumbnail images, grabbing photos, getting more out of your video than just video. Now it's also worth noting that you can't use 5.3K in time-lapse mode, which is perplexing to me. I would love to be able to punch in on my time lapses or pan around the frame and yeah, I can only do it in 4K, which is pretty good, but other GoPros can do that too. But there is a mode I'm really excited about and that is 4K 120. In plain English, 4K 120 gives you amazing quality slow motion. We were getting shots of Jack whipping over this huge jump and it just looks incredible. It looks like something that would come out of one of my much higher end cameras and anybody can just like walk into Best Buy, buy one of these and get incredible shots as long as there's some decent lighting. Now on older GoPros to get 120 frames per second, you would have had to lower the resolution. So in other words, you are sacrificing image quality to make the video really smooth when it's playing in slow motion. On the Hero 10, you can shoot buttery smooth slow motion using all the pixels that would be on a typical high-end TV in your living room. 
Now the other video quality features, I'm not gonna bore you with in this video. You can look up the specs on GoPro's website. You can go to like a real tech reviewer's YouTube channel where they're gonna tell you every little thing. Let's just say this does have a lot more shooting options than the previous GoPro. So let's get into the other features that make the Hero 10 unique and that make it a little bit better than the previous models. Now the first feature is an absolute game changer and that is a usable touchscreen. I've used them all, the Insta360, the DJI, all the imitation cameras, they all have better touchscreens than the GoPro, but not anymore. This goes toe to toe with any touchscreen I've ever used on any camera. And so that alone might make the upgrade worth it if you're using your GoPro a lot. The next feature is with the GoPro app. When you're pairing your camera with the app, it does so quicker. For me, it was noticeably quicker and noticeably more reliable. Now, overall, I don't know if the camera is more reliable because I didn't really get the chance to use it for very long. I'm filming this a week ago, and so it probably doesn't have the same software you're using. My GoPro locked up on me twice, both during playback mode. It never locked up when I was actually using it to film. Anybody who's used the GoPro knows they fritz out every once in a while, and you need to pop the battery out and put it back in. But like I said, I'm not using the same firmware as you will, and I'm sure it's going to improve. Now, another usability feature, one that I'm really excited about is scheduled capture. You can put your GoPro in any mode you want and set a time for when it should start recording. That means you can use a GoPro for a construction time lapse. This is a construction time lapse camera. I bought it for construction time lapses. You'll have somebody building a wall or building a trail or grading something. You set it up, you program it to turn on at seven o'clock in the morning and turn off at the end of the workday and you get this big long time lapse. Now you can take a Hero 10, plug it into a USB battery, mount it in a tree somewhere, and watch like a swimming pool being built. You program it to start recording at eight o'clock in the morning and turn off at the end of the day. That's a really cool feature. You could also set these up on a race course somewhere and program them all to start recording at the same time when the race starts. That's not a feature that everybody's gonna find really useful, but I will because I went and spent $400 on this thing that doesn't even have good video quality. Now you can do it in 4K on a GoPro. So let's just review everything really quick. The biggest new features are really good touchscreen, 4K and 120, so amazing slow motion, the ability to do scheduled capture, a quicker and more reliable interface with the GoPro app, a new natural color profile, incremental video quality and stabilization improvements all around, and a new 5.3K resolution, which is pretty good for grabbing stills. Every time a new GoPro is released, you're gonna hear that it has revolutionary image quality and revolutionary stabilization and that it's the best GoPro ever. And yeah, it's way better, it's more powerful, but most users are not gonna see any difference. You're gonna see a way bigger difference between good lighting and bad lighting than upgrading to a better camera. So to me, the big news today is that GoPro's amazing older cameras that are very powerful are now more affordable to everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I know tech reviews are not normally what we do here, but the GoPro is very relevant in mountain biking. And so I wanted to give you my perspective as to whether or not it's worth buying, whether you should spend your hard-earned money on a brand new GoPro. If you like this video, if you wanna see more of us mountain biking and building things and doing all sorts of silly stuff not related to GoPro, subscribe to Burn Peak Express, subscribe to Burn Peak, our main channel where we do bigger things, and thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.